on the agenda packet is uh, not actually just the real tax. It's the summary of the budget discussion that's gone on uh, for quite some time um, as part of committees and the full board. What's actually on the agenda is highway maintenance needs and consideration of real tax. This is referred to you by the executive committee. And just to clarify to make sure everyone knows, uh, the county administrator's budget does not include the real tax. This was actually requested by board members uh, as an additional discussion item uh, brought to the executive committee and would require a completely separate action by the uh, committee as well as the county board to consider an ordinance uh, related to the real tax. We're simply providing information and uh, also to clarify um, uh, so that the board and uh, the committee understand what actually is included. I just want to touch a little bit on, on net road needs and what's included in the county administrator's budget and then give you some information about the wheel tax. There is no recommendation by staff to do the wheel tax or not to do it. We're providing information that was requested by the board. It is not in the county administrator's budget. So just to make sure everybody understands exactly where we're at. Um, this all comes out of the earlier uh, policy planning discussion that was at the highway maintenance shop uh, earlier this summer, talking about what's actually happening with highway maintenance needs. Uh, the fact is that we've been holding the line at the dollar amount that we've been spending for quite some time uh, uh, for meeting road needs. The problem is that over the last seven years alone, in most cases, material costs alone have gone up by over 70%. Uh, just to give you two basic facts to talk about on that road needs, uh, when we spend $2.1 million a year as a fixed dollar amount on road construction, back in 2004, that would be 12 miles of road, basically. It depends on the project. Uh, today, that would be 6 miles. We're doing less than half to the dollar amount that we have. Uh, seal coating is another example. $460,000 uh, spent a year approximately on seal coating. Back in 2004, that would have done 50 miles of road. Today, that does less than 20. So you understand that it's not simply about holding the line, it's that the cost of actually doing the projects, not labor, this is materials, have gone up by that much over that period of time. Uh, we recognize that uh, any kind of increased revenue is never popular. We're just simply bringing the information that the board asks us to bring you about the wheel tax. Uh, before I even get into the wheel tax, though, let me make sure you understand what we have done in this budget, because I think that's what's most important. Uh, that's what we'll be asked to vote on at the uh, on budget adoption uh, next week, and we have done everything we can within the existing budget to shift resources. Number one, what we did was we shifted $400,000 worth of uh, levy from other sources, other uses within the budget, into highway uh, uh, road maintenance. Uh, so by cutting other areas, we've been shifting that into this area, but it still doesn't begin to meet the needs of uh, county roads. We estimate that based on the current level of, of cost and the current level of, of unmet needs, we should be funding highway maintenance alone, just year in, year out, of about 1.2 million more per year in seal coating, crack filling, patching, shouldering, the basic types of maintenance just to maintain the existing uh, pacer rating and existing, uh, existing conditions. In addition to that, uh, because of the way that urban sprawl has happened in this community and the lack of, uh, of actual providing for uh, uh, roads as the development patterns have gone on, we had at least $37 million worth of unmet road needs of reconstruction and rehabilitation right now. And the only way that counties can pay for roads other than a wheel tax is property tax. 83% of everything that we do as a county highway department is paid for by property taxes. So there are no easy solutions. Uh, our um, uh, roadway conditions continue to deteriorate, and uh, evidently there are no easy solutions for additional revenue. So we just want to provide you all of that context. So first of all, we shifted 400,000 from other uses uh, into uh, uh, the project or into highway maintenance. In addition to that, we'll be asking you to fund a $5 million uh, project that's been uh, uh, needed from a safety and construction standpoint, uh, which is County OA that we've talked about many times. That's a $5 million project. It's the largest project that we've done in a single year. Uh, the traveling public will be able to only have to deal with that construction in one year. So we'll talk more about that, how we deal with it uh, within our debt management. Uh, the, the third item, of course, is that you should recognize that the entire county budget across the board has been held to a 0% increase. By shifting needs between each one of the areas, we've held the line on the entire budget. The only exception, the only increase, is that 1.15% increase, which holds the rate of the same, but allows us to raise an additional 315000 based on the value of new construction. So it doesn't shift costs to existing taxpayers. It grabs the value of new construction. That 315000 is 
in a separate line item, independent of wheel tax, independent of any other discussion, that 315000 is in a line item that the county board will be asked in the new year to make a decision between either putting more into road maintenance or if there's no other way that we have to actually open up the additional pod in the jail that would fund that staff. That's the only increase in the entire budget to the property tax levy. Now, why did we tie those two together? If we might be my brothers, uh, we would just fund more roads. We need to be able to do that. I, uh, um, but with the dynamics of what's happening in the jail right now and the jail population that you'll hear more about tonight, I believe we need to set the standard that we ask of the judicial uh, system, uh, justice sanctions, probation, parole, to do everything they can to control the jail population so that you can make that decision to shift this line item completely into highway maintenance or some portion of that. We'll talk about that uh, this evening. So again, our goal is to control the jail population. We'll talk more about that uh, tonight. We've got the sheriff, Judge Gonzalez, uh, Jane Kleekamp, uh, but you will be needing to make that decision in the new year. Clearly, we have enough on that road needs that we could easily use the additional 200000 but that's the only place that these two issues are tied together. Um, I think there might have been some confusion that uh, when we brought the item for discussion to the board that somehow the wheel tax was tied to jail. It can't be. By law, the wheel tax can only be used for, uh, uh, for roads and road maintenance. Uh, by law, it can only be acted by an ordinance of the board. It's not in the county administrator's budget. Uh, we're simply providing the information. And at the executive committee last week, they asked that it come to and be added to this committee agenda uh, so that you could have some input and some discussion on it. So I've got a handout on that that was supposed to be in your uh, agenda packet. Uh, I'll just pass that around. There's enough for the public as well. Um, I included that. Uh, again, uh, this is not an endorsement. It's providing the information that's requested by the board. Um, it shows that uh, currently, and I don't know all the history of who's considered it or hasn't considered it, uh, but currently uh, the wheel tax is imposed in City of Beloit, City of Janesville, City of Louisville, City of Milwaukee, and St. Croix County. Uh, and obviously the controversial issue that's been here in many jurisdictions that uh, have imposed it. Um, I believe uh, Supervisor Holtz talked about uh, that when he was in Kenosha County that oh, he was imposed. Kenosha City. Kenosha City? Okay, I'm sorry. Um, that this was imposed at one time and has been uh, replaced. Uh, this gives you an idea of the dollar amount that uh, uh, would be levied uh, were you to do this. Uh, it uh, obviously uh, enjoyed some discussion and public uh, comment earlier, uh, but recognize that it is a significant amount of money, uh, but it's also a significant amount of money that would uh, begin to chip away at the unmet road. There aren't any easy answers when infrastructure costs far exceed the ability of just a standard rate of inflation to keep up with, and uh, there aren't easy solutions. So I just wanted to give you that entire background. I know the mo most of the committee understood the rest of our budget recommendation did not include the wheel tax. Uh, this is brought to you at the request of uh, the county board and the executive committee for you to discuss and uh, give us direction. I don't know if, if Ron had additional items. <coughs> Ron and uh, Mary Powell in our finance department are the ones yeah, that actually did research on the authority about the wheel tax. Obviously, uh, Dave uh, Lang of the council could talk about what the legal authority is and what the legal process would be for you to consider it further. Um, and, uh, I think that gives you about a quick an overview as I can of our unmet needs, what we're doing in the existing budget, and the context for why some county board members have asked us to be Thank you, Steve. Ron, do you have any comments? Not at this point. Anyone else? Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, so, Steve, are there only five jurisdictions in the entire state that even have a wheel tax? Is that correct? That's our understanding right now. Um, I don't know if anyone else is talking about it this year, but I know that um, uh, St. Croix, for example, re debates this year when it comes up, uh, but it has been instituted. What was the year there, 2007, I believe? <coughs> any, no. any municipal jurisdiction can be instituted separately and on their own authority, as I understand. Thank you. Neil, this may be a question more or less for uh, a member of our committee. Is there any possibility that with the way things are on the state level, that there would be any more money coming back? Through the state gasoline tax or anything like that, because when he made the statement there that uh, you know, when he was using a big
baseline of 2004, whatever, that was about the year that uh, gas tax indexing came to an end in the state because of things, and that's been a lot of a problem which we've been talking about every year at the highway conventions is in order to get to ever get us back in, it's going to be state aid through the gas tax more than it's ever going to be able to generate through something like this, which is, is uh, which I'm, uh, well, I'm somewhat neutralized at this point, but I would like, would do not want to see this wheel tax because of segregating out a colony in this area. If we get to the price of fuel again, which, but is uh, this, I'm really asking the member here, Steve, can you address any of that? Is there a any possibility of getting anything like uh, uh, indexing back to gas tax? Well, indexing has been um, a topic of discussion ever since the repeal, and I assume it will be uh, discussed again. Uh, I'm not sure that, uh, what I guess I would call critical mass, is there at this point for um, the state to uh, reenact uh, indexing. Uh, I just don't see a sense of anything that would be considered a tax increase in, in the, the current environment in Madison. Uh, not to say that at some point the pressure is, is not going to be such that we have to do something. In fact, I had an interesting discussion um, after the Economic Development Fund meeting this uh, past week with Don Bradley from the Center Committee, and also the auto dealer in town here, talking about with the, the hybrids and the electric cars and so forth, um, they're not paying to use our roads. And so we may end up looking at um, alternatives to uh, the gas tax to, to fund more of the, uh, the roads uh, infrastructure and maintenance simply because not everybody is going to be paying as we evolve into you know, the future technology. I, I don't know that I would say that's in the very near horizon, but it's, it, it's something that's not going to go away because we're going to see that revenue will continue to decrease uh, as time goes on. Anyone else? Maureen? Um, yeah. Um, I looked at my old notes from four years ago when we discussed this last at the county board level. I didn't do any, any, any new research on it, but I looked to see what, um, what I had looked up uh, several years ago. And it, at that time, I noticed that uh, some other jurisdictions had a wheel tax and dropped it, including Kenosha, Sheboygan, um, Amory, and, and Marathon counties. Uh, also, something that I had from a few years ago was Mayor Tom Barrett in, uh, in Milwaukee issuing a really, a really tough um, veto. It, 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 so I'm curious to see that now the city of Milwaukee does have a, a wheel tax. So I'm wondering what changed because at the time he had objections um, such as that it would be the, the city people paying for a lot of commuters who would be coming into Milwaukee. He didn't want Milwaukee to be a tax island. He didn't think it was fair for residents to carry the sole burden of street repairs when others are benefiting from those repairs. Um, so there, there isn't a lot of a lot of passion for for a wheel tax or for for any kind of taxes, uh, but but I think a, a wheel tax is is an interesting tax um, because it is one that can go a long way towards keeping the the streets and the roads maintained by the users and not just the property tax payers. So it, at least it would have something to do with who's, who's generating, uh, who's using the roads, and who's paying for the roads. Um, part of the, the problem with, with some common real taxes, though, is that it's the city residents who have the most cars, and the county uh, roads are what are being funded. So that doesn't make, that doesn't make a wheel tax desirable for city people either. Um, so there's a lot of a lot of things going against 
wheel tax if something's going for it. In addition to maintaining the roads, I read that they can also be used for, for funding transit systems, that they can possibly be used for uh, compensation for, uh, for sheriffs, for, for safety matters, for extra equipment. Um, I, I, I think that a wheel tax is something that needs to be talked about. Uh, I'm not sure that this committee is the only committee that should be talking about it. I wonder if, since there is an element of needing to get the county and the municipal, municipalities together to be talking about it, a way of perhaps um, uh, dividing the amount in the responsibility so that the um, the wheel, so that there's something like a shared formula so that the municipalities uh, would would be compensated based on the, 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 the amount of, of um, miles traveled and that, and that it would be a fair division. I, I think it, it should be talked about. I wonder if there's another forum for, for discussing this with uh, some kind of a regional forum for the city, um, city of La Crosse, city of Alaska, and the county to be talking about this together to see if there's any appetite from the city to be involved in some kind of a, the city to be involved in some kind of a process also. It's, there's, there's more than just this committee talking about it today. Certainly, and we'll obviously follow in your direction. The, um, the issue is that the cities, of course, have their own authority to do that. And recall that I've made the point before that 83% uh, of everything we do for roads is paid for by property tax. And we know that the vast majority of people that are being taxed to pay for that for county roads, of course, are in urban areas. So whether it's mm -hmm. property taxes or user fees, either way, the majority of people paying for roads that they don't use on a regular basis outside the their um, urban areas are urban dwellers. So it's, it's one of those challenges why um, uh, we all have a vested interest in controlling what happens because there is no way to recover the cost of roads outside the areas. When you have a subdivision that's built and puts increased uh, pressure on the roads, nobody's paying for that uh, except for the majority of property taxpayers that are in, in urban areas. So why I talk about uh, subdivisions, sprawl, those kinds of things, we all have a vested interest in the entire county standpoint because it keeps putting pressure on urban dwellers that are the vast majority of property taxes. Or they'd also be the vast majority of the wheel tax. But no, we haven't taken this any further. This is just a follow-up to a request from county board members to bring the information forward. So that will be up to this committee or the county board to um, take it through as far as discussions or consideration. Well, I certainly don't think that we have any kind of basis for making the recommendation to to um, to start with the wheel tax, right? But I think that this is something that the, the full county board would want to hear discussed, particularly since several of the people who raised the question are not on this committee, so I, I think that I'd like to see the whole county slot sometime. Certainly, and if you want, we'll probably put it on next week when we're talking about budget, but uh, to get direction for this year's budget, it'd be pretty late to do yeah, that. I know that. Um, it's not on tonight's agenda, for example, so I think it'd be improper to have a, an extensive discussion. Right. We're doing a lot of budget stuff tonight, but um, it's not listed separately, and I do think it should be listed separately. Right. Uh, if we're going to have a, a significant debate about it. Jeff? If I read this right here, it's all trucks that are 8,000 pounds or less. Mm -hmm. And there's no place in there that trucks weigh more than that. Would not be subject to this. It, it's one of the challenges that one of the executive committee members pointed out was, as we learned from the highway commissioners, the heavy trucks and large vehicles that do the most damage to a road, exactly. while a, uh, a low-weighted uh, Prius or a, or a standard sedan vehicle or even a pickup truck um, doesn't do the same kind of damage, but uh, that's what the authority of the state uh, says as far as um, initiating the effect. And there's, well, and must, it must mean that the all fire vehicles are good. Ron, you could weigh in on farm vehicles and heavy, heavy sure. work. Yeah, go right ahead. Uh, no, anything uh, 
these numbers are put together with all the exemptions. We actually received the numbers and the who and all of the information from the Wisconsin Department of Transportation so that we can get very accurate. Um, anything over 8,000 pounds is exempt. Um, anything that doesn't have a license plate, i.e. a tractor, is exempt. Um, anything that is government owned is exempt. Anything that's nonprofit owned, if it's got a Big Menard spreader. <laughs> Over, and one overloaded vehicle is the equivalent of 19,000 cars at 20% overload. And that doesn't even come close to where the manure spreaders are. <laughs> <laughs> Forgive me, but I want to make sure I understand something correctly. Um, the time for public input was at the beginning. Of the Ray morning. said something. Is that right? Oh, I'm a supervisor. Also, you're more, I just wanna, you have I'm more authority. To Forgive my ignorance. I, I, it seemed absurd because we're learning more about this. I felt awkward speaking in the beginning of the meeting about something I'm finding much more about tonight. Just now. It's, it just seems a little absurd. Forgive me. I'm sorry. And please don't mistake my anger and my passion for disrespect earlier. It's, some, it's something a lot of taxpayers are angry about. But, but I see a, there's, a lot of good, there's a lot of difficult... A lot of difficult issues here and, and a lot of difficult solutions. That's why it's the first time it's been on the agenda. And forgive me again. About. Forgive me again. I, I, it is better to know more about the subject now that after we've already had the chance to speak about it. I think that's a little odd, but forgive me again. I'm, I'm not trying to be disruptive. I, it is nice to have better information, though. So, how do we go forward here? Are you, are you going to contact other committees? Uh, we brought it to executive committee. They asked to put it here. I guess it'd be up to the board or committees to see if there's any further discussion on this and in what format. Again, there's not an ordinance or a resident of policy choice because um, the issues of raising revenue are never popular, but the climbing road conditions and the situation we're in where material costs have gone up so drastically over the last uh, seven years and it doesn't look like any great end in sight. So this is going to continue to be an issue uh, over years and uh, cost of building roads when people use less gas to try to drive less. <coughs> road limits are eliminated. And a couple of years ago, the state uh, uh, exempted, what was it, forestry trucks? Forestry, they took from an 80,000 pound load to a 98,000 pound load year round. So from the standpoint of promoting business, they're allowing uh, private business to beat up our roads more than they were before, but not giving us any resources. So these are the kinds of issues that can happen at the local level. Uh, that uh, there aren't a lot of easy solutions. Uh, so again, it would be up to this committee, being the purveyor of, of the public works uh, highway area, uh, uh, to take it further. I know it'll be talked about at the board meeting next week during adoption, uh, but um, again, it would require separate action, separate process to uh, add to the budget and, and to do that. What's your thought for moving ahead would be to put it as a policy uh, item on some, some future meeting? Certainly, and we do have a, a responsibility to report back to the full board, oh, yeah. uh, which is why we started with the executive committee last week. They asked to have it here. Uh, I, I suggest that we have it on next week during budget adoption for discussion, but we wouldn't be in a position to have a separate ordinance or all the other things that are necessary. Sharon. Part of the reason that the uh, executive committee passed it to this committee is because highways are under your purview. And there are a couple of avenues you can take. You could form a study committee. Uh, you could have an ad hoc committee that would go outside this committee since the two people that requested information are not on this committee. So it could be a countywide ad hoc committee or a study committee within this committee. So the, the, the reason we passed it on was to ask you to look at any other possible options too and know you don't have any ideas. <laughs> Well, I think those are excellent points, and, and I, I agree with the idea of having a, a, this uh, as a topic on the policy, uh, future policy planning meeting. I like what you've done in the past, you like with uh, this building, for example, talking about here's the situation, here are some options to look at. So I think you've already done in the first part um, a few months back talking about the problem that we had with the $37 million in our fees, uh, perhaps throwing out some different options out there. Versus the bonding, we can spend some of that. Uh, you know, what are the various options? And I'd also like to hear.
here, you know, the counties that have, or the, the communities that have adopted a meal tax, what has been the reaction of the community? Did they say, oh, gee, we're seeing our roads are better in this whole